hej. Det var jävligt tyst här, men han kvar lite. Tja. Nu ska jag fånga honom. Ja. Ah, Möjligt. Åh, oh, vad där? It might say reporter on my desk, but I spend most of my time at the standard making coffee for my editor. I'm tired of writing the gossip column. This story is my shot at the big leagues. When I prove that Bullard was murdered, All the big papers will come calling. I'll finally escape this backwater town. This is it. The chance I've been waiting for. Oh, okay. Det var så ingenting om den där jävla handen som var under. Ja, där är ju ganska skuppet. Om jag var Geralt så skulle jag kunna sniffa mig till kassaskåpet. Ja, okej. Ja, där har vi ett papper. Ja, det syndes ändå. Okej, ska vi se. Börja med hörnen. Det här har vi lärt oss. Easy peasy, man. Boy, okay. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, but there's still not a box here. Harrisbullen, jag är Woodcutter, jag vet din hemlighet. James Lowry, eller Lowry, skickar hälsningar, typ. Woodcutter, ja. Uh, prime suspect. I, went, I bet his blackmail scheme went south, so he killed Bullen. No, Bullen. Bullen, Månen? Kanske. Kanske månen. Dream thought. Ah, min näsa kliar. Han står kvar där. Ja, 
That's it, the safe. Okej, okay, då måste det finnas i andra rummet. Hur går vi? Hör upp! Aha! Ah, från, eh, från kvinnan. Frun eller vad det var. Here's the latest chapter all typed up. I think this story is becoming very interesting and I'm sure you can get it published. I hope you don't mind, but I made a few edits and inserted a few details here and there. I'm looking forward to your next chapter. To Bobby. The Ghost to Cave. Chapter 3. The man had been dead for hours when they found him. He had crawled halfway up Sarah Johnson's porch steps before coming to rest just outside the door, his feet dangling off the edge like spaghetti that somebody had cooked too long. Old Sarah just... Old Sarah just about keeled over when she saw him. The man was inked, weird line crisscrossed every inch of his skin like Indian war paint. Even his eyelids were marked. The tattoos made him look like some African shaman out of Natural Geographic, except that he was white and was wearing work overall. All <coughs> two sizes too big. Jimmy, the only cop on duty at six in the morning, thought maybe the man had escaped from a chain gang. Jimmy was never the sharpest tool in the shed. Detective Henderson, though, he's as smart as a whip. He had photos taken of the body, all naked and everything. He put the pictures up on his wall, and the little station in the middle of the town started... What? And started moving them around, turning them this way and that, until the tattoo edges started to line up. It took him three days. But he put it together, just like a jigsaw puzzle, until the thick lines all connected to the thin lines, and the overall shape became clear. Would you believe it? It was a map. When the coroner cut the man open, he found his insides were all twisted into the same map. And when they saved into the man's bone, oh, when they sawed into the man's bone, they found the map there too etched into the narrow, like rings, on the tree stump. Well, that's how we first found our way into the cave. <clears throat> Bobby the Errand Boy, aspiring fiction writer. Och Josie hjälpte Bobby med att skriva det. Okej, 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 nu börjar vi koppla ihop lite. Lite pusselbitar. Helikopter. Oh, vi har en pappersbit. En pappersbit. What a what do we have here? Dear diary, today is an anniversary. It was five years ago today that I found Dad's name on an old research paper at the U of C. He had written it in 1933, eight years before I was born. I didn't know he had gone to college. I had never really thought about it his life. Oh, I had never really thought about his life. He was just a name on my birth certificate. Dad ran out on Mama. After the war, he had gone off to fight and just never came back. Nate. 
Joseph came to Kansas to look for her father. But now I must read the document because I uh, accidentally misclicked. No, not, not a daily log. Joe's diary, yes. And just never came back. When he stopped writing, Mama thought he'd been killed. I remember her crying at the kitchen table. The war ended. Life went on. Mama died without ever finding out what happened to him. I used to hate him. Hated the idea of him. Hated my mother a little bit too. I figured Dad was just a deadbeat who ditched Mama because she didn't want a kid. But then I found his name in the library. Something changed. I couldn't stop thinking about him. They'd be dads don't study physics, do they? What is he doing now? What does he look like? Is he married to somebody else? I traced him here to Kansas, but finding him is taken longer than I had expected. Okay. Interesting. Interessant. Interessant. Ah! Oh, hello. Bill told me to cover Bullard's death, but he's just looking for gossip about the young assistant. But I took it seriously, did the research, followed every lead, like a real journalist would. It paid off. I found something everybody else missed. A note, a half-thought, scribbled in the margins of the coroner's draft report. It read, hypothermia in summer? Mm -hmm. Där är jag då måste vinna knapp. What up, boy? What up, boy? I'm coming for you. Om det är ingen skillnad. Vi behöver dyer. Men om jag går hit och sen kollar på honom. Då är han inte här. Okej. Okay. Har jag inte kollat allt i det här rummet nu? Kanske inte garderoben. Kommer till ihåg. Nej, det är inte ett jävla pish. Vänta lite. Jag ska köra där borta. Jag ska köra för att mörda en man med. Jag kanske inte mörda med, men du typ bär dig lite något. Oj, jag tror jag råkar öppna den från utsidan. Såklart tidningen. Jag har inte läst tidningen. Jaha, Josie är assistenten. Det var inte frun alls. Assistenten, assistenten kanske gör vad det är Ah, 
Aha! Okej. Okay. Det här är jag gjort. Jag kört Skyrim. Jaha, den nu. Så det är den man ska utgå ifrån. It's a small wooden knob. Och den ska vi vara i hallen. Nice. Hoppas jag inte glömmer bort den bara som jag gjorde med allt annat. Books. Ja, oh, en, en papper. Dear yeah, diary, today Dr. Bullard and I built a chassis for his new weather device. It's weird as usual. I don't really get why we're building it, but Dr. Bullard doesn't explain things. Tomorrow I need to go to buy some bottles for the base. Today was Mama's birthday. She would have been 54. I bet she would have liked the work I'm doing right now. I hope she's proud somewhere. I had the nightmare again last night. It's been over a year since I had it lost, but it never changes. I've written about it over and over, but the writing seems to help. So I'll tell you about it again. I'm five years old in an apartment in Chicago. It's dark. I've gotten out of bed to get some water, but I hear something coming from Mama's room. I peek in and see a tall man standing over her. He has his hands around her neck. He's breathing hard, and in the cold night air, I can see his breath. It streams out of his mouth like smoke and seems to cover her. There isn't any breath coming from Mama. She's already dead, but he continues to squeeze. When I was a kid, I thought the dream would go away when I grew up. It hasn't. Jose Herrera has recorded dreams about this man of death! Uh -huh. Ja, den säger bara vad jag sa. Men jag har ligget steget före. Ja, jag har ligget steget före. Ja, för jag har ligget steget. Tjävlar! Ki, 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 ki! What the fuck? <laughs>